Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Brainstorm with me, meteorologist Matt Gray and the 4 News Now YouTube page. If you enjoy some of this science-y weather content and earth science content, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as we try to grow this into uh, the best YouTube channel for some news and uh, entertainment and everything else uh, for local coverage here in the Inland Northwest. So we got the quite the week, we've had quite the week around here with snow and just generally <laughs> kooky weather uh, for the middle of April. Even though snow in April is fairly common, it's your odds historically have been less than 20%, about 18% that you end up with snow over one inch for the whole month of April. In Spokane, well, guess what? We certainly did that. Take a look at some of these snow totals interpolated off of the uh, of the Spokane radar. So there is a little bit of a hole right around where the radar is by the airport, but we do know that officially we got 1.5 inches, which is something like the fourth snowiest uh, April of the 2000s. So since 2000. There's only been three other years uh, where we've had a whole entire month of April that has been similar to what we saw basically in just one day out of this month. And that's what you find with the snow records for April. It's usually one day where it ends up being quite snowy, and then the rest of the month is a, a little different. Now, this whole week has been uh, insane in the membrane here as we've had record cool afternoons. We've had some record lows in the morning. We've seen record snow, not just around Spokane, which was a record for the 14th of April, but we've also ended up with uh, places like Wenatchee saw some record-setting snowfall, and we're seeing some also uh, some record-setting or near record-setting snowfall in parts of the Cascades as well. But what I want to talk to you about today is the reason why we ended up with all of this snowfall falling overnight, Thursday night into Friday morning. And particularly, boy, look look at some of the interpolations. We did get some reports uh, to the National Weather Service of some parts around Kootenai County seeing over six inches of snow. So this was some big time stuff uh, that we ended up seeing with this system. So let's talk about it a little bit more. And I'll put on our radar picture. So this was over the past 24 hours here as we're recording this on uh, the afternoon or Friday afternoon and you can see in the radar picture a little swirl counterclockwise swirl pushing its way ever closer throughout this period towards Spokane you can see by the time we get into midnight you can see that counterclockwise turn basically hovering right over Spokane and Coeur d'Alene and particularly in the Coeur d'Alene area continues to push snow to the north from the south is just pushing snow over the rafter and prairie over and over and over again and finally it kind of well bleeds itself out as we go through the day on Friday so this is a great example of what we call a in the meteorology world a meso low so basically what that means it's a tiny little area of low pressure that develops within a bigger storm system as a whole and I think this would be a good idea because I like to talk about this. This is one of the, kind of the three or four first things you learn when you're in meteorology school are the scales of weather. So you have what's called the planetary scale. So these are big overarching weather and climate systems that move around the entire planet over 3,000 miles across. Then you've got what we typically talk about when we say, hey, there's a system moving in. That's what's called synoptic scale. I don't know why it's called that. If I did, at some point, I forgot about it. <laughs> but essentially, yeah, there's Latin in there, I think. I don't know. But when we talk about, hey, there's a storm system, this is usually what we're talking about. So those high-pressure, low-pressure systems that cause all the weather, anywhere between 3,000 miles across to about 600 miles across. That's what we consider a storm. Now, when we get into what we are just talked about, small scale low pressure systems, small scale little circulations, individual thunderstorms, uh, tornadoes, 
things like that things that are really really small like an individual snow shower moves over you and produces say like four or five inches of snow meanwhile you go five miles away and it's quiet that's the example of mesoscale weather where weather's happening in one spot but it's not in the other maybe two or three miles down the road so it's a broad definition here but essentially if it's a couple hundred miles across if it's a really big line of thunderstorms or it's very small I mean individual thunderstorm cell for example we're talking about summertime weather or an individual snow shower that's what's called the mesoscale and then you have for example the micro scale which is uh, I live at the bottom of the hill and I'm getting fog but my neighbor who lives at the top of the hill well they're not getting fog and they're also not as cool as me in the morning because all that cool air slides down to the bottom of the little valley that I live in so that's called the micro scale and all these little scales of weather the the smaller the scale is the less our computer models are going to predict what's going on so that's why weather reports from you the viewer are so important because it's those little micro scale things that there is no way that any computer model or me sitting here is going to be able to detect unless there was a weather station at every person's house and that's why we love viewer reports and that's what helps us a lot but I'm getting off track back to the mesoscale so we're talking about a small area of low pressure how did we create that how did the weather create that to where basically that was the mechanism that made it so where this snow spun around and got into our neighborhoods and got, a, got sitting over Spokane and caused all these problems within the bigger flow of the overall storm. So let's talk about this. I'm going to bring this up. I only got 24 hours of data on my computer, but we can go over to Colorado State University and their satellite imagery, and this is just awesome. So we backed up here. So our date here, this is the middle of the afternoon on the 13th. So that would be uh, that would be this uh, past Wednesday. Right, just kind of the first wave of the storm is coming in. I put a couple different layers on here so you can know. Here we are in Spokane, right here. Here is kind of the first edge of the storm that's pounding into places like Oregon. And watch what happens as I put this into motion. You can already see there's a little bit of low pressure off the coast of Washington and Oregon. And you'll notice here that we start to see some lightning flashes being detected by this satellite. So especially around the Portland area, they ended up seeing a little bit of hail and some thunder and lightning as well here on Wednesday afternoon. And so this is gonna be important because we're looking for a lots of rising motion in the atmosphere to create these little meso lows, these little baby low pressure systems uh, that as they continue to created and then they're tracking across that's what caused the all the snow to be produced for us and so as you can kind of see here it's very active weather particularly in south uh, western Washington and northwestern Oregon and you've also got some active weather moving in to southern Oregon as well so you've got a lot of vertical motion here in the atmosphere plus you also have lots of vertical motion here because of snow showers moving across the Palouse in central Washington as we're going through the night, Saturday, or not Saturday night, but Wednesday night. So we had a lot of weather activity on Wednesday night, lots of rising air, and essentially we've got the perfect environment, including how the air is moving in the upper layers of the atmosphere. We've got fast winds moving over Oregon. Winds aren't as moving as fast over Washington. So you've got rising air as well. That promotes rising air around the uh, southern portions of our viewing area, southern portions of the inland northwest. So you've set everything up. Active weather. You've got a, a, a strong area of the jet stream moving in. Fast winds higher up in the atmosphere. Lots of activity. You've really, really set things up to create this little baby low pressure. And you can see here this is the middle of the day on Thursday the Sun is up and you can see that little spin there as it's tracking up closer and closer to Spokane and then here's the Sun goes down 
you could see it through the night. You could see those clouds spinning right over Spokane, dumping snow. And then eventually, you could even see some of that rotation, that energy moving off into Montana, if I back this up a little bit. So watch this again. Active weather, south, southern Washington, northern Oregon, all day on Wednesday. The next system that comes through, low pressure, spinning motion. Essentially, you've got weather systems that are creating their own baby weather systems within. So uh, it's like the uh, like the nesting dolls or Inception or kind of whatever name you want to do it, but. So you can kind of see how these little these little features can develop when you have kind of the day after or in the hours following this more intense weather. And so that leaves us with the result here where you have little baby low pressure area, which now is continuing to, to promote this rising air, right? So it's almost a feedback loop. These storms kind of feed off of the storm before it, the night before, and they feed off of each other. And so you end up with this little baby low pressure that goes right up I-90, continues to bring rising motion in the atmosphere, continues to promote shower and thunder, or shower and thunder shower uh, development, not necessarily in our area with the thunder part, but continues to promote shower development all the way into the night and into the morning, and we're still seeing showery activity even so today. So just uh, kind of one of the things that's really difficult about forecasting weather in this part of the world is those little tiny little weather features. They're really hard to pick out. You don't, you kind of have to kind of watch them develop and uh, forecast for just the next few hours. You know, the night before, it's not necessarily something you're going to see. But once you do see it, once some of these small weather features do form, then that's how we can predict the weather for you. It's just not going to be as far ahead as what we would like it to be, right? We would love to say, hey, you know, it's going to dump, uh, you know, anywhere between an inch and about four or five inches around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We would have loved to say that a couple of days ago, but quite frankly, we just didn't have the knowledge. We knew that there was going to be a chance for some snow showers, but where exactly they would line up. And another thing, too, even just a couple of hours before the snow moved in, you know, there was a pretty good chance that this was going to line up even further south of this. It was just dependent how far north this little little baby low pressure was moving and that's very hard to predict as well because like I said before the smaller the scale, the harder the computer, harder the time the computers are going to have with it and especially when we talk about more than say 12 to 24 hours that is really uh, we kind of got to lean on them quite a bit, the computers to, to predict or at least give us a hand in predicting what's going gonna go on in the future. So yeah, little little meso lows, little baby low pressure systems forming within an otherwise active weather pattern. And that's the difference between getting a lot of snow and getting a little is some of these little features when they form or when they don't. So uh, a little rambling again here on this Friday. Still got my coffee. Trying to get myself going here, even though it's the afternoon. But that's what happens when you work nights. So hopefully you have uh, learned a little bit about this. And if you like more cool science content, make sure to subscribe here for News Now. Put out brainstorm videos every week. You should have another one for you coming up on Sunday. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.